We're here at the IS meeting in Vancouver, BC, and we're here with Tony Fauci, who is the director of NIID in Washington at the NIH, and we appreciate you taking the time from your busy schedule. And I know you want to see as much of the conference as possible so you can talk to other people about how great right. this conference is. And it really has been great for prevention. It's been an, a watershed, and I'm going to let you take it from there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obvious that everybody's goal is to end the HIV AIDS pandemic. Mm -hmm. And at the core of that, is a comprehensive prevention program mm -hmm. that encompasses all of the aspects of prevention that we've been talking about over the years that the data has shown is quite effective if used properly. Mm -hmm. One of the major emphasis that we've seen at this meeting is a confluence of, of a couple of studies that have really made it scientifically absolutely slam dunk about what needs to be done, and that is the follow-up study of treatment as prevention, the 052 study that was published in 2011. Mm -hmm. That study right now has been followed up a few years down the pike and the data are still as robust as they were when it was first shown. Mm -hmm. And that tells you that it's of a public health benefit in preventing infection if you treat people who are mm -hmm. HIV infected early rather than late. The lingering question was always, well, it's a public health benefit, but is it beneficial to the person who's infected that if you start them really early and balance the toxicity and the issues with the drugs versus the virus, is it a benefit to the individual? And there were two studies. One, the Temprano study that was done a, a while ago in Cote d'Ivoire, gave significant evidence that it was beneficial to the person. But the START study, which is being discussed in great detail at this meeting, uh, that study completely nailed it down. It said if you randomize some people who are above 500 and you say you either go right on therapy immediately or you wait till you drop down to 350 or below, mm -hmm. what is the benefit to the person? And overwhelmingly, there was a 53% decrease in serious events and death mm -hmm. in those who waited um, mm -hmm. uh, if you had waited for therapy as opposed to starting it and you started it at f over 500, 53 mm percent -hmm. decrease in events compared mm -hmm. to those mm -hmm. who, who waited. So um, that's science that's telling us that we should start therapy mm -hmm. on everybody and anybody. Which is now even a more compelling reason why we should test. Right. Well, see, that's, what I, was, th that's what I was saying at my, at my uh, uh, special lecture. Mm -hmm. I said, the, the underlying core and basis for any prevention approach is testing for two reasons. If you test and you're positive, you put someone in a care continuum, you help them, we know that from the START study and the Taprana study, and you definitely prevent them from infecting others. We know that from 052. If you test someone and they're negative, that's not the end of the game. Mm -hmm. You've got to put them in what I referred to as a prevention continuum, where you continue mm -hmm. to follow them, you counsel them, you make sure they adhere to the prevent. It's very analogous to the care continuum. Mm -hmm. You get them into a system, mm -hmm. you counsel them, you make prevention modalities available to them, you make sure they get follow-up and you make sure they adhere. So if we could do that, get people tested, and counsel the uninfected and treat the infected. Uh, there's no reason at all to think that we can't dramatically turn around this pandemic. So they're in the sexual health system because right. it really is, uh, there is no prevention and treatment right. and care. It's all together right. anymore. I, I'm excited about this. I think uh, Julio was very excited because he feels it, it kind of came back from the original conference here in 96, which proved right. that we had this opportunity to treat and effectively treat people. Now we have the, the opportunity to effectively prevent this disease. So right. it's it's really an amazing, uh, another watershed here. You bet, you bet. Yeah. Yeah, very symbolic that it was transformed in 1996 with the availability of effective treatment and our job was to get people treated. Mm -hmm. It was great, the announcement by UNAIDS that we now have 15 million people on treatment by 2015 ahead of schedule. And then back here in mm -hmm. in uh, Vancouver, For more we're, yeah, really we're, we're talking things. about you know the start study, 052 follow up. Mm -hmm. It's very exciting. So what what is it that the government needs to do? What is it that we can do with the government? What kind of action has to happen? Well, there, there has to be a very aggressive seeking out 
testing voluntarily, linking to care, keeping in care. If a person is infected, treat them right away. Mm -hmm. Don't wait, treat them right away. And if they're uninfected, make sure they're in a proper prevention uh, continuum. Mm -hmm. Offer PrEP if they are in that risk group that would have an advantage of having PrEP or tailor your prevention modalities depending upon their risk stratification. It seems like we have a large uh, educational effort to the providers and to the states and to the counties and the, the health municipalities and health offices in, in the country, in our country, right. for, for our purposes. So uh, how does that roll out? Is, it the, does, is there an effort from the government to educate and inform about these, these undeniably important principles. When you say the government, you're talking about the United States United government? States government. Okay, yeah. so the United States government, I think what you're going to start seeing when they roll out the National AIDS Policy Office, NAPO's strategy, updating of the strategy, it's going to contain a lot of the things we're talking about, about a very aggressive approach to testing and linking people to care, getting them on therapy, providing uh, prevention modalities like PrEP, making sure people understand the opportunities for PrEP. And then it's being done at the local and state level. For example, New York State under Governor Cuomo has started mm -hmm. a blueprint for 2015 mm -hmm. to end the AIDS epidemic as we know it in New York State mm -hmm. by doing just what we're talking about, by aggressively seeking people mm -hmm. out, testing them, linking them to care, making prevention services available to them, including PrEP. So if it can do it in New York State, you can do it anyway. California, San Francisco has done a terrific job. So it's at multiple levels. It's at the federal level with a broad national policy. It's at the state and the local level, at the city level. So we have to have a certain element or a certain number of percent or per, or of people tested and treated. Right. And tested and, per, and also into prevention, as you say, to get into that herd immunity effect. Because it, it seems at some point you can't get everyone. Right. But if we get a profound number of people into that continuum, right. then it seems like this the right. numbers. So will that's go down. the reason why, as the CDC said some time ago, and I strongly believe, that we should test everybody. It should be mm -hmm. a, it should be a part of medical so, care. You test everybody once, right. and people who on a history are in anything that resembles a risk. Right. Uh, uh, situation, you repeatedly test them over uh, whatever Appropriate interval. to their risk. Appropriate yeah. to their risk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. My pleasure. It's, it's always it's, good to see you. And it's always good to see that we're moving in the right direction, right. and this is a wonderful conference for that. It is. Yeah. It indeed is. Thank All you right. so much, Tony. Good to see yeah. you.